Cheryl Vargas and I'm owner of Studio 928. And I'm doing this video for you because you purchased a Bluebird to paint. So you should also have a piece of tracing paper in your kit along with a piece of carbon paper. You should have a tray to mix your paints. And of course your paints, which I'm reaching for on the other side of the canvas trying not to interfere with the visual that you that you have in front of you. Okay, so um, you should also have uh, two or three brushes, a medium sized brush, a large brush, and a super thin brush for the fine lines. Okay, so what you wanna do is um, you don't have to do this on an easel. I'm doing it on an easel for demonstration purposes only. I would lay this down flat on the table so that, um, you know, it's easier. So um, I'm doing this because I love you so much because I want you to see this done the way it should be done. So um, the first thing you're gonna do is notice that there's two sides to the carbon paper, one dull side and one shiny side. And you're gonna put the shiny side down first on your canvas and I'm just using a piece of artist tape to tape this down um, but you could use um, a piece of scotch tape to tie this down and then I'm going to take another piece and tape down my bird image And I'll probably do two. I wanna make sure that it doesn't overlap on the edges, so I'm gonna definitely move this over this way some so that my bird is 100% on the canvas. That looks about right. Move it up just a little bit. Put this tape here. And kind of rub it in so it stays. And then I'll put another one on the other side so I don't get the droops. And that's it. And so you want to use a ballpoint pen. Um, if you use a pencil, it's very, very likely that you're going to uh, puncture your tracing paper. It's just annoying. So um, I definitely suggest that you use a ballpoint pen. And then you want to just make sure that your image is flat on the canvas. And then start at a point uh, where you can see where you began. Now I'm using this blue pen so I can tell where I started and where I've ended. And then I've also, that's the reason why I um, printed your tracing paper so lightly instead of very dark outlines because this way, whatever color pen you're using, you can see where you've been. That's probably the most frustrating thing about tracing is uh, sometimes you can't tell where you left off. So this way you can see very clearly that there are places that you haven't done yet. So right now I'm going around here and I'm not really worried about getting it 100% straight. I just want to make it so that I know where the different parts of the body are. I'll be using my reference more to do the finished painting. So we're gonna do some feather lines here. Here, oh, we can get right here as well. And it doesn't look like I got that line, so I'm going back there. And grab this little leaf right here and I recommend that you have music on to relax to as you paint I normally have some jazz on or some of my um, old-school favorites but in order to make sure that this video stays available to you. I have to forego the music because of copyright issues. Sometimes YouTube or Facebook will pull down a video because it has um, copyrighted music. 
so most of my favorites even though some of them should be in the public domain some old jazz tunes um, they're not so the video gets interrupted so yeah as you can see I'm not pressing very hard to get my shapes and also my shapes are going to be a little lumpy because I don't have the kind of control that I would have if I was tracing this with my canvas flat on the table as opposed to uh, me trying to um, do this in a vertical position because I'm demonstrating how to trace. So yeah, you just want to keep going. And these lines are guidelines because when you start painting, you're gonna put your own spin on it and make it your own. But those are just helpful guidelines. And then you're all done. And there's your image. And then you just peel it off like that and you're ready to paint. Okay, so um, right here, if I were you, I would pause the video Make sure you had all your equipment. You need some water and um, some, you know, your paintbrushes and you need your colors. So the first thing that we're going to, the first color that we're going to use is um, a flato blue, which somehow is missing from my collection right here. So I have to grab it. not in one of those containers but it is here in another larger container so the first thing we're going to do is mix some blue I say let's just dive right in and mix some blue we're gonna have two colors of blue we'll have the light blue that's here and we'll have a dark darker blue here and an even darker blue there some people have just taken to painting that area uh, black which is fine so if we want to mix a light blue, the first thing we do is we start with the uh, less dominant color, which in this case is white. And typically when we blend colors, we start with the less dominant color and we add little droplets of the primary color into the mix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you can see how much white I have there. Okay, and I'm actually going to divide this in half with my brush, like that. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of my Flato Blue. Okay, that is a lot because <laughs> it's a very powerful color. So I'm just going to add just a touch of that. See, I still have most of it on my brush. I'm just going to lay this down because I'm going to use the rest of the paint on that brush. I'm going to mix it in to my white. See how powerful it is? You just need a very small amount of your dominant color. So it's like one part of the phthalo blue to like five or six parts of white. And still, that's a really... Um, blue color okay and I'm going to um, use a smaller brush to transfer this paint to the canvas so um, I'm just going to take a brush like this and take off some of that excess paint And then I'm just going to drop it in my water. And I'm going to start painting this area underneath his eyes. And I'm using my smallest paintbrush. You want to make sure there's not too much paint on my brush. You want to bring it to a point. And you do that by twirling the paintbrush until it becomes pointed. Okay, just like that back and forth and then you'll get a point 
And then I'm just going in here. And it looks like I neglected to put this little line that goes under his um, facial area. But I do know, here, let's do this. And remove his tape and use it here. Okay, so there's this little area underneath the, um, I don't know what you call that bird thing right there, but um, I'm going to guesstimate that it goes from here to about here in a curve. So I'm going to draw a line from there to there, just in a little half circle, because I neglected to draw my line there. And then I'm just going to paint this in. And I'm opting for not so purple blue. I mean, we can make it a little purpley by adding just a touch of red. Um, so let's do that. I'm just gonna add, oop, that would be green. <laughs> that would be green and this is red. So I'm just gonna add teeny, 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 tiny, tiny amount of red. And I'm not really discoloring my red by I touch it in there. And I'm just going to add that to this to give it a more purpley tone. And it's the lid, so I don't care so much. I'm gonna put a little bit of that red over here first before I go into this area, cause too much. And then you'll have uh, not so much the color you want. So always when you're adding that dominant color, which in this case is red, put it off to the side first, pick up a little bit of it and then add it in a little bit at a time. So there, that's getting close to that bluish purple. I think um, I might add a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna grab um, my paintbrush that's sitting over here with the blue and just add a little bit more blue. Ooh, I think that's getting close. Maybe just a little bit more red to get us that purpley blue. There we go, I think we got it. So just remember that. So when you're mixing colors, always err on the side of just a little bit first and then add more. Never try to mix a color like, if you wanna make purple, um, never mix equal parts of red and blue. It's, you always start with the least uh, dominant color, which in this case is blue, and then add little tiny, 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 tiny bits of red to it. And then I think we match that purple pretty nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm twirling my brush to get a nice point. And I'm gonna start in on his head. And I always like to just lay my brush down and pull it along the edge, really nice and slow. And then that way you'll cover up the actual carbon line while at the same time making a straight line. Now, one thing that I typically do that I am not doing right now 
is to add some or have a spray bottle nearby you know like one of those bottles you take to the beach to keep you cool and then I spray my colors so that they stay moist as I'm painting so in this case I will just have to move a little faster so that my colors don't dry out because I didn't bring my spray bottle. And then you just mist it really nicely and um, it'll keep your paint from drying out because acrylic paint tends to dry rather fast. So, and then under this area, we've got from here down, we've got like little curviness going on. So, we'll just put that in and we'll come back with green later. So we're painting this according to this image, but you can make your bluebird whatever color you like. Could be just like the slate of blue you have in your kit and um, uh, add white to that. Whatever you like. And I'm covering over the um, lines that are there because I can still see them through my paint. And I have an image to reference so I can always fill those in later. And then I will go back and paint the beacon. And whenever I need to paint a, a thin line, I always start away from the point. So if the po most pointed point is right there, I start here. So watch what I do with my brush. First of all, I make sure I got a nice little point on it, so I twirl it so it's a nice point. Then I start here where I know I don't have to really worry about the thinness of my line and I move it towards the point where I do and then I lightly lift my brush away from the surface so that I get the point that I like that I need for this particular situation okay that's how you do that okay so the next thing is why don't we go ahead and knock out that line that goes um, across his face. I'm going to pick up some more Flato Blue and actually I have quite a bit left on this brush here. It hasn't dried yet so I'm going to add it here. And that's going to be my darker blue. Now that blue there is actually kind of a steel blue and in order to achieve that, if you like that, I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm gonna lay my brush over here to the side again. But if I wanna get that steel blue like that, or that, um, oh, I don't know, kinda like a slate cadetti blue, um, I would add black to my color here, this color. So that's what I'm gonna do, show you how to get that, if that's what you like. So I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush that I've cleaned off and dried, and I'm just gonna grab just that much black. So this black that you have in your kit's gonna last you quite a while. So I'm going to start over here because I'm done with this uh, blue color. 
I don't have to use it anymore. Um, even though I may use it um, to fill in some cracks that maybe I'll find later. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to add just a little more black. But that's a lot, so I'm going to put it over here. And then add a little more here. until I get the color that I like. I think that that color will work. Okay, so I'm gonna do that same thing as I showed you before. Go into the place where I have the most room. And also, um, I just use the very last two hairs on the tip of the tool brush, the tool brush, the paint brush. So I'm not pressing hard, I'm just using those last two hairs. Even if it takes you two, three, four strokes to get the color in with just those two hairs, at least you stay in the lines and you achieve what you set out to achieve. So yeah, to get into these small spaces, you don't put a lot of pressure on your paintbrush or on your canvas. You're just using the very, very, very tip, the very, very, very tip of your paintbrush. And very lightly, like you're barely touching. When you push down hard, you get fat lines. Push down even harder, the line gets even fatter. So don't do that when you're trying to get into small spaces like that. Make sure you're just using the tip of your brush. And you're twirling it to get your point. And I'm just using those last two hairs on the end of the brush. And I think I'm going to overlap this a little bit. There. Alrighty then. So, oh, you see, I totally missed that. So, that looks a lot darker than I expected it to look, but that's okay. Now I'm going to go in with some more of this lighter. blue, mix in some of that darker blue, and let's give his eyes the, that color around here. Just use the tip of your paintbrush. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with some black, just a little bit of black on the end of my brush. And let's give him that 
big, beautiful bird eye that he has. And don't worry about the reflection, we'll get that later. Okay, we'll give that a minute to dry. And now we're gonna make our green. So everyone should have green. I know I skipped that Flato Blue I had before. I kind of think it looks better with that original green. I'm sorry, original blue. So I'm just taking some green. And I'm going to add it, this little bit of green, to my white. Not all of it, because I don't know how powerful that is. And I don't want to take any chances of it being too much. And also because I know that it's easier to add more than it is to try to take it away. Add just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm going to Let's lay down that color. Oh, that looks pretty against the blue. I'm going to smooth out these lines here because I had a, I drew them kind of hastily. So this is a really light green, so you can still see your carbon paper lines through them, through the color. So um, sure, you can go in and do outlines when we're all done. So your bird is outlined like this, or you could leave it just kind of natural like this as well. So the next thing I'm going to do while that's drying is I'm going to skip his little legs I'm going to go forward and um, mix some brown so that um, we can do the branch that's sticking out there. And we're going to start with some blue, some Play-Doh blue, just a little bit, and we'll add some brown, I'm sorry, some red. I'm going to clean my paintbrush first so that I'm contaminated. I'm going to take some red. I think red is the dominant color. And last but not least, we'll add some yellow. Make sure your paintbrush is clean so you don't contaminate your colors. Okay, so I'm going to mix. So I'm going to start with my yellow over here, and I'm going to add some red, and some blue, and we are going to make brown. I 
It looks like we need some more red. clean off my brush. Put some yellow to the side and then add some yellow in. Now I guess I'll take all of that yellow because that's getting me closer to my brown that I want. Okay, so to that mixture, cleaning my brush again, adding just a touch more yellow to my mixture here. And now I'm getting nice milk chocolate brown. Okay, so So let's twirl that brush, get a nice point. And let's go in underneath the little bird and make the brown branch underneath. Now, what we can do later is give the branches some dimension so they don't look so flat. But for now, we're just giving it its base color. So if you ever find that you have too much paint in one spot, it's okay to just attempt spreading it out instead of leaving it in the one place.
Okay, I'm going to one of those smaller areas again. So I'm going to start in and push out the tip of my brush. So if you ever have any questions about something that you're painting or, or you want to paint live with us at Studio 928, just go to our Facebook page. It's uh, just called Studio 928. And you can get access to our Facebook group where people post their paintings and get suggestions on how to do better and it's just a community of people who love art and who love painting and it's called Time for Art with Studio 928 and also you get the latest information on upcoming paintings and um, kit sales, painting kit sales and special occasions like we have one coming up for Mother's Day Okay, so I put down a nice layer of green. I'm sorry. <laughs> green is stuck in my head. Maybe that means I'm getting money or something. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to go in again with um, some more of that um, pale green that we made a little earlier. Um, and I'm going to add another coat of paint here. And also I'm spreading out some areas that are a little heavy with paint. I'm mixing up some more of that green because I I ran out. Always looks so much nicer when you get a a second layer of acrylics on. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do his little pink feet, so we can get a layer down. Typically, when we mix a light color like pink, it usually takes a couple layers. So. I'm gonna go, so um, I'm using, so like one part of uh, red to this lump of white right there, but I'm actually gonna put some to the side, make sure that it's not too much red. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep, cause that's all I needed. Little pink toes for the little blue bird. So I'm twirling that cover on my brush so I get a nice point and I'm gonna go in and paint his little pink feet then what I think we'll do is um, we'll use darker pink to create some dimension on his claws they're claws they're not feet Cheryl yes And it's okay if your pink is lighter or darker than mine. It's your painting after all. Uh, okay, so we're gonna give that an opportunity to rest. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna add some more red. I'm going to go ahead and give it darker, pinkish color. I'm going a little darker. See how much darker? Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, that looks so much nicer. 
Yeah, it was just a little bit too pale. I like this a lot better. That's why it's nice to have a reference photo too. But again, you can do whatever you like. It's your painting. Okay, so if we're gonna do the outlining thing, we have to make sure that we give this an opportunity to dry. If you have a um, hair dryer in your instruction sheet, it said, if you have a hair dryer available, by all means use it, it <laughs> speeds up the process. So I'm gonna mix some more green into this existing green that I have to paint those leaves. And I don't think I want them to be too light, so I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. And yes, I should probably have used another brush or cleaned this one, but I, I'm the keeper of the paint. So I have lots more. But you, in order to preserve your paint that you have, should always clean your brush before you dip in. Okay, let's see, what do we have here? Is that dark enough? Nah, that's not dark enough. But what we can do is just go in later and do some accents with our darker green. So you notice that I'm holding my hand so I can get um, steadiness out of my strokes. As I say in my classes, when we have 3D classes, I prefer to paint on a flat surface, not using an easel. I don't know what happened to this leaf, it's all deformed. <laughs> So I'm just gonna ignore that little thing that's happening out there. We'll get rid of it somehow. But yeah, I always paint on a flat surface. I'm sure in painting class, professor would flip out if she knew that I was painting on a flat surface where it's supposed to be artists, so we paint on easels, right? Well, I like to do what's comfortable. Because I feel like it puts stress on my neck when I paint on an easel. But I guess there's a lot to be said for painting on an easel. And whatever you do, you can change it up to make yourself feel more comfortable. There we go. Now the fun part is accenting. So we'll get to do that. Oops, too much paint on the brush there. Okay, I'm rinsing off my brush. This is my finest brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up some black from my little pot of black here and lay it down. Twirl my brush so that I get a nice point. You want one point you don't want any um, stray hairs from your brush sticking out. It should all be one unified point. And let's go ahead and outline this beak. Now, if you don't think you can do this, you can be done, okay? Um, but I'm just going to start here using just the tips of my brush. Now, if you find you're using the tips of your brush, you're not getting enough paint. It could mean that um, you need a little more water on your brush. And just move really slow. Okay. 
Gonna add a little more water. And twirl my brush so I get a nice point. And I'm gonna go in and give this beak an opening. And I'm barely touching, because I know if I push too hard, I'll get a big fat line that I don't want. So there's my line there. And I'm gonna continue over the top using just the lightest pressure with just the two hairs on the tip of my brush. Very slowly, just the tips of the hairs on your brush. And then I can still see my little wing marks, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And there's a little... And if you start getting that happening where um, the lines don't complete themselves, that means that you're running out of paint and you need to go back and twirl it to get that point back again. So I'm gonna go back here, cause I'm done with that side. And I'm just using tip of my brush. Add a little more water because I feel like my paint's getting a little thick and I'm mixing it so that it's still opaque and I'm twirling to get my point back again. And then I am starting here in the middle. Now, I'm painting on the canvas because I need to do that to show you guys. Um, what I'm doing, but you can lay your canvas down on the table if you like, use your paintbrush like a pen, lost a um, line here. Okay, don't make the same mistake I made. And then using just the tips of your brush, to get my point back. Mm -hmm. 
And we can go and outline the feet if we like. You'll need a point on your brush for this. I always find that it's better to make a line going backwards than forward sometimes, but that could be just because I'm right-handed. It's probably for left-handed people going in the opposite direction is probably what works for them. All right, so basically that's it. That's your painting. Um, you are welcome to go in and finish outlining the leaves. We'll do one last thing though, um, and that is to give the, the branches some definition. Typically, your branches will have a shadow where the joints of the branches meet. So it's always kind of nice to put those in. And you do that just by picking up some of your black and then outlining underneath. 